section 3.3. This is now the major section which will allow you to work already on several of the assignments. This is the main message, one of the main big messages and goals of this lecture series. I want to teach you how to calculate principal stresses. They are also called eigenstresses and principal directions or eigendirections. That are two synonymous words. Eigenvalues, eigenstresses, eigenvectors, principal directions. This is all the same thing. And now I was using the words from linear algebra, eigenvalues and eigenvectors, you know from linear algebra. OK, and this is one point here. Stress, which I just have defined in the last few minutes, uh, has a mechanical physical meaning. Linear algebra is used to calculate the principal stresses. Linear algebra is first used to calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. But if we work with stress, we call the eigenvalues eigenstresses or principal stresses. So that is why we talk about stresses now, and that's why it's not immediately to recognize. But the whole exercise here is now about repeating the linear algebra on how to calculate eigenvalues of a matrix in a three times three matrix in two, in a two rank vec tensor or three times three in three dimensions. Okay, so this is one way to see it. The other way which does not really involve mathematics at all. If you don't like mathematics, uh, then, then this section is about the question, is it possible to find a cut area, sorry for this, uh, to find a triangular cut area such that the stress vector P becomes parallel to the normal unit vector? This is the mechanical interpretation. And why is that a special case? Because if the stress vector P is parallel to the normal vector, then we do not have shear stresses on this plane. This is a special situation. Can we find it? This is the mechanical question. And that one will be very important because this is related to eigenvalue. This is equivalent of calculating an eigenvalue or a principal stress. OK, so this is the motivation for subsection 3.3. And this is very central. central. We will practice this in tens of exercises and eigenvalue calculation will come back again and again and again. And this is what you really have to do a few times by hand in my lecture. In future, the computer will do this for you most of the time, but you have to learn it once such that you recognize when the computer is giving you nonsense. And most of the time computers are giving you nonsense. You must recognize it. OK, now this is mechanics. This is basic mechanics. Interpretation, more interpretation will come later. And this is now bringing in the mathematics, the linear algebra into my lecture. And I'm talking a lot because this is really the most important element of the lecture so far. Now, the question can be rephrased in mathematics. Is it possible to find P such that P is a factor multiplied with the normal unit vector? The factor is the norm of the vector. The unit vector is the direction. So we talk about vectors as in the uh, previous sections as yesterday. So factor is the norm of P actually, and N is the direction. And the cross here is not the cross product. It's just indicating a multiplication. This is not maybe not really consistent, but factor without anything in between also would not be clear. Now, uh, the factor, what is the unit of P? What is the unit of N? And then you know what is the unit of factor. Okay, N has no units. It's, it's non-dimensional. It's a one without units. P is Newton per meter square, force divided by area. Okay, so factor must have units of stress. Okay, so we use a sigma without any index to have a shorter version of the equation here. We substitute factor with a symbol sigma. Sigma without any index, what is it? Sigma without any index, is it a tensor? No. Sigma without any index, is it a vector? No, it's, it's a scalar. Okay, so what we have here is one possibility, one number. The n makes, makes the right-hand side a vector, so we have a vector on the left-hand side. Okay. And we want to know, is this possible? That's why the question mark is here. 
This is in symbolic notation, this is in index notation. And we have calculated the NIs before, so we can work with those now. Oops, that was too much, too fast. Now, this is taken from the previous slide. And now we insert Cauchy's formula from the previous subsection. PI, we know, is sigma ij times nj. That was Cauchy's formula. The stress vector is computed from the stress component by projection into n direction or by multiplication with n, matrix multiplication with n. Okay, and this one here is what we know from the Cauchy formula in index notation or in other symbolic notation it's written here. And our question mark from, from above here just tells us this is a constant times n1, n2, n3. Okay, so with this we have the same vector on both sides and we have a matrix now suddenly and we have a scalar on the left hand side. Okay, so can we merge this? Can we bring this into a better form? And actually this you do by multiplying the scalar with the unit tensor, unit matrix, that makes this object a matrix also, 3 times 3. This object here is a 3 times 3 matrix already, and you, we bring both on the same side, on the left side, that means on the right-hand side, zero remains. Okay, and this one you should remember from your mathematics lectures or books. This is a homogeneous system of algebraic equations. And how do we solve it? The unknown is sigma here. The unknown is n. So can we solve it? Now, the first element, we know that this system is solvable or has a solution if First, n is not equal to zero, and the determinant of the coefficient matrix is equal to zero. So then this object has a solution. If n would be zero, then it would not be a unit vector. If all n's would be zero, it would not be a unit vector. So this case cannot happen. Okay, so now you remember the determinant, the definition of the determinant of a matrix. Just calculate it, write it down. And you will see that at the end, what comes out is the character, so-called characteristic equation. The characteristic equation is third power in the unknown sigma. So sigma is the unknown. There is a I1, which is summarizing a few of the stress components. There's I2, which is summarizing a few more of the stress components. This means that there are many more. And I3 is summarizing again the determinant of the sigma stress matrix stress, unlike the sigma symbol without index or without brackets. OK, so I1 are shortcuts for stress components. I will discuss the meaning of them again and again in the next uh, lectures and later. I2, I1, I3, these are abbreviations. They are called invariants, actually. I also will discuss this later again. And they are the invariants of the stress tensor, and they are the constants, the coefficients in the characteristic equation. Okay, so most of you should have done this already. I cannot easily do a poll now, otherwise I would have asked you, I can do that later, uh, how many of you recognize this pattern here, recognize this mathematical procedure. Now, uh, if you have the determinant, if you know all these coefficients, and this we will practice, we will ask you sometimes to calculate the eigenvalues, sometimes we will ask you to calculate the invariance and write them down. If we have this, then we can solve this equation for being zero, and a third order polynomial can give us three solutions. And these are the th then the three principal stresses, sigma one, we know, sigma two, sigma three, to distinguish them. Here, sigma one, sigma two, th sigma three, are not components of a vector. They can be written as components of a vector, but here they are just numbers. A few times the index notation is confusing, okay? And they are obtained for arbitrary case, and we decide that it is handy to sort them all the time. 
So we want to have sigma 1. When you calculate them, sigma 1 is not necessarily found to be larger than sigma 2. After sorting, we want to see this. Sigma 1 should be larger than sigma 2, should be larger than equal sigma 3. Some of them, some, they can be equal. So that is not excluded. Okay, so this is getting the equation system. That was the first few slides. This was writing down the characteristic equation for finding the solution for the unknown sigma in this equation system. Okay, and these solutions, the three solutions, are then the principal stresses or eigenstresses. Okay, the principal stresses are the eigenvalues. Eigenstresses, eigenvalues, principal stresses, all the same thing of the stress matrix. Okay, now a uh, short break for me. I take a look at the chat whether there are questions.